All right, so um, this is what we're after. We want to have something um, obviously better than what's in the rendering. Anytime we're looking at a rendering from Maya or any 3D software, we want to always be able to enhance it afterwards. That's the whole point of going into Nuke um, to do that. Uh, we could use Photoshop, but like we talked about before, any changes we do once, we have to keep redoing every time we get a new file. So it's kind of repetitive. Um, some things you could do in After Effects, it's just not as friendly as Nuke is uh, when you get into this level, okay? So this is a before. This is what it looked like outside of Maya as just a straight rendering. And then this is what I've done to enhance it. You can see that the blue glass is a bit more blue. We have a bit more contrast in these bright areas down here versus some of these darker areas. Um, and we basically have a lot more control over the entire thing. Um, if I go into this area here, way up there, and I undo that, you can see within a button click, I'm able to change basically the color of the glass and change colors of the letters. Um, if this were something that I rendered out blue and then the client said they wanted this green, I'd have to go back and redo that entire render, making my job take even longer to do. Um, especially when we get into some of these high-end renderings. This image is um, not full size. See, this is 1400 by 1750. Your rendering is 3000 by 2400. This still took like a half hour to render out that one frame. A higher end one could take hours to render. Um, as an example, I really kicked up the settings to like 4800. So it's obviously double the size that you had. Um, I set it to render. I went to work out. I went to the store. I came home. It was still rendering. <laughs> Okay, um, so the bigger the render, the longer it's going to take. Um, just like before, we do these in iterations. So if you set it all up as a low res, the great thing about Nuke is that it will transfer to the high res. Okay, just a matter of being able to push those buttons in there. Now, this is what I was talking about before, uh, being able to then show how all these different passes go in to create that final thing. I can put my signature on it. You don't want to actually put your signature on things. That's just a funny thing to do. Okay, but you can see all the different stuff that went into creating that image. And so if I give this to a client uh, or a, uh, a company I'm trying to work for, they can see that I understand how to break something apart because that's what they're going to do. They can see that I have control of the glass, of the framework, of the flooring, of the shadows, of every single aspect of this based off of this super quick little short video here, okay? And that's what they want. So the goal today is that I'm gonna show how I uh, set up my render passes, how I rendered it out, how I brought it into Nuke, and then some of the stuff that I did there. The only thing that um, you won't have on your computer um, is the CryptoMat stuff for uh, Nuke. Um, there's CryptoMat for other softwares as well. In the modules, um, I put the crypto mapped zip there, and you can download that, extract it. You'll get a bunch of folders. One of them will be a nuke folder that you will then put inside of your users folder, your name, dot nuke, and then all those crypto mat files would just go right inside there. And then when you open up nuke, you will get this little icon, which is a crypto mat icon, which I'll get into. Uh, in a minute. All right. There you go. So let me open up my building. So I'm going to set my project first. And then I will open up my building passes to. All right. So here's my building. Uh, let's look at the lighting real quick and we'll look at the materials. So my light, I have one area light facing it right there. I also have a sky dome light right there. Um, under the create area, under lights, there are other lights here. Don't use those lights. Those are not Arnold lights. Those are Maya lights. Those don't work the same way um, as the Maya ones do. They can, but default they don't. Any lights you create should be under Arnold lights and then make them from here, okay? Uh, this type of setup, typically an area light and a sky dome are the two you would typically need uh, for this setup. 
I've also taken on my background and set the camera's visibility to zero so that I don't see that background when it renders out. It's not a huge deal because I should be able to cut it out afterwards anyway, um, but I need to make sure that I have a nice clean area to cut out. Um, and then my area light is very big. Remember the bigger the light is, the wider the shadows are, the smaller it is, the tighter the shadows. Something like a building, a giveaway that it's fake is if our shadows are just too sharp. Um, typically you're dealing with the sun, that's what's lighting it up, and typically you would have more of a uh, spread out shadow, okay? Um, anytime I do any lighting inside of 3D or any app, um, I'm looking to create what will eventually be contrast, but I don't want to create that contrast yet, okay? So what I mean by that is looking at this building, there are some darker areas, there are some lighter areas, but there's nothing that is 100% black or 100% white because I want to be able to do that when I get into the uh, software, when I get into Nuke or I get into Photoshop. If something in here, and you can't see it very good, I'll uh, nudge this up a little bit. If something in here is 100% black or 100% white, that means all the values are gone. It's just like a solid value here and a solid there. I can't tweak it either way. If I have a nice grayed out image, okay, where it has contrast, it has areas, obviously this is lighter, this is darker, I can play within that range. But if everything is dark or everything is light, I can't really play within that range, okay? So anytime I'm doing my lighting, that's what I'm thinking about as I do that, all right? So as I'm inside Maya, <clears throat> and let me lower my settings a whole lot so I can make sure this goes quicker, two, Actually, I'll just set that to zero, like really horrible. And I'll also set the size down. See, that's really big. Uh, I'm going to go 1,000 just so we can at least see it. I talked about cameras before, so I have a nice camera set up. And then I'll render. How about you? Right, so that's pretty even lighting, okay? It is brighter up here, closer to the sun, closer to the sky, so it would be brighter. Darker down there, closer to the ground, more bounced shadows are coming up there, so it's kind of darkening it a bit more. <clears throat> so that makes sense. I'm happy with the way that looks. I may want to, let's say that I'm doing a night scene with this, I would still keep these things in mind. I would still have my entire building dark, not black. I would not have anything super dark. I may have lights inside my windows, and so I could actually put little lights inside the windows, um, making little area lights inside of there. It's going to take longer because then we have more lights, more shadows, more things happening. So this is a very basic setup. Um, cool. So let's, that's a good rendering as far as the lighting and that goes. Uh, what happened to my glass? There it is. Uh, so I'm going to go into my render settings, and I'm going to add my uh, AOVs. So I add ambient occlusion the same way we did it in the past assignments. There's nothing different there. Uh, I did verify that as I'm going through and I'm creating that ambient occlusion, that I'm getting the same results. What? There it is. Uh, I'm getting something that is not super gray. Uh, I want to get something that has, in this case, really good contrast between black and white. The areas here where it's nice and flat, that should be white. Um, the crevices should be pretty close to black, not 100%. That looks pretty good, okay? This gives me, again, some range to make it a little bit darker or make it a little bit lighter. Um, it is grainy. You can definitely see the stair stepping here. When I crank my settings up, that will all go away. Um, I also did a Z-depth. That one's already in the list, so I can just click it and add it to it. You can't see the Z-depth in here. It just turns out to this bright color. However, if you crank this down even further than negative 5, like negative 20, too far, 10, not far enough, 15, right in the middle, you can start to see the depth there, okay? When we get into Nuke, that will come into play, just like before. Um, I also added a crypto material, a crypto object. These two will allow me to select items inside Nuke based off of their material or based off of their object. Um, I also exported the diffuse, the direct, the indirect, the shadow, the shadow diffuse, shadow mask, shadow matte, specular, and transmission. These are typically the ones that I will use pretty much every time. 
If I had something special going on, I might render out something different. But for the most part, those ones should be standard across the board. Um, if I use the coat attribute in the um, Arnold material, I would add coat to this. Um, if I had any light emission, I could add the emission part. I don't need the opacity. If I add sheen, I could do that. Subsurface scattering. That should be good. Okay. Um, cool. So that's for those. On the materials on each one of these, basic materials, I don't want anything too reflective, like glass, reflective. It should be somewhat reflective. Uh, my steel beams or the border around it shouldn't be. It's not going to be polished. It's going to be typically concrete or some brushed uh, aluminum or steel or something. So my steel, you'll see that it's a grayish color. It's a bit rough, not very reflective. Uh, if I click on my glass, <clears throat> we have about the same reflection here. But under, if I go into my transmission, I have a little bit of transparency. I've tinted it a little bit blue. Uh, my weight for the base has been pulled down. The color is more of that blue color. There's no locked in numbers. Don't ever look at a tutorial and try to follow it step by step. Be able to look at it and say, the glass looks like glass or it doesn't, or how do I get it to do that? Um, what else do I have? There's the V, and the V is this blue color. Um, it is kind of shiny compared to the other ones. There's my ambient occlusion. Uh, and then the rest are pretty much the same thing. Some are rougher. This is the uh, carpeting I have a material for. Let me switch cameras real quick. So this, I have a different material. Um, I also have another material for the cubicles. And I think that's pretty much it. Yep, that should be it. Uh, I do have a shadow mat on the ground. It's the same one I've used before. Uh, in this case, I did not use the specular. I didn't think it matched really to have that reflection in the ground in this case. The product had seemed better. This one, no. So there's no specular, but there is the um, diffuse. That's all default. This is all default. I have alpha mask. It's all set up. All right. So uh, I'm going to do just a quick render of this. Make sure I rename this. All of my stuff, now that I'm doing this, I'm making sure that I name these things. Building demo glass. Uh, I've also hit merge AOVs. And make sure I'm in my camera. Perspective trace. And render sequence. Make sure I'm on perspective three again. And render and close. Now, I did two different renders. One of them I did with the glass, one of, the, one of them I did without the glass. That way I can basically get an image of what my building looks like without having any glass at all inside it. Another one I did with the glass, so I could see what it looks like with all the glass inside it. This is on this screen, it's thinking. And even this is still taking you know, longer than I would expect. Um, there we go, beautiful. Okay, so this is my render. It automatically saved to my images folder because I set my project, told it I was working on building. It automatically dropped into my images folder. I'm gonna turn the glass off, go into my render settings, say no glass, render sequence again, and I'll get another one without the glass. The more reflections you have, the more lights you have, the bigger the image, um, the bigger the textures when we get to that part, the longer our renderings are going to take, okay? Um, so we really want to be able to streamline our stuff as much as possible at these early stages so that we can basically get it all set up, hit the render button when it's good to go, and then walk away for a day and a half apparently and come back and it should be ready. We update our nuke file and everything's good to go. All right, so this is the one without glass. The other one with glass has already been saved. So now I'm going to go into Nuke, and I'm just going to read in my two files. Uh, bloop. So uh, demo glass, demo no glass. I know that these are the right ones, um, or that they are working, because they're big files. Um, each one of these is about 26 megabytes here, 21 megabytes there. Uh, my other ones up here, you'll see 632 megabytes, 518 megabytes. These are the huge ones. And then these are the medium sized ones, and then these are the demo ones. 
Okay, so this is the one without glass, and then this is the one with glass. So I'm just hitting one to see it, and then tapping the space bar so you guys get a bigger view of what that looks like. Okay, so um, first thing I want to do is just start to separate some of the stuff. So I'm going to go into my glass, I'm going to use CryptoMat, and I'm going to say CryptoMat. So this connects it. If it didn't connect it, you just connect it like that. I'm going to hit one so I can see it. And let me close all these properties, change this to one here, and then double click. Uh, what this does is, as I double click things, it'll just replace whatever's there. With it at 10, it'll just add a new one to the list and then add another one to the list. Okay, so this way it's a lot easier for me not to get confused as to which one I'm on because this window could scroll down 10 items. That's way too much stuff. All right, so I'm gonna go to CryptoMat. Um, I'm gonna use my color picker and I'm gonna tell it how I want to pick. Right now it's set up to be um, layer selection by material. If I say by object, I'll get different colors and this is showing me every object that I had inside of Maya will allow me to isolate using this method. So I'm gonna hold down Control and Shift and click on the windows. There we go. These are also windows, so I'll Control Shift click there. And what that should do is isolate just the windows. Okay, now this is making an alpha channel. This is making transparency. So if I were to hit A, you can see how the alpha channel is now cut out. Um, I don't want to do that. Uh, I want to be able to separate it so that I have just the glass. Um, so uh, I'm actually going to leave this, this one as alpha, other ones I'll change. So I'm going to turn off my color picker, turn off my preview, make that bigger, there we go. And then I'm going to uh, cut the glass out of here by just hitting tab and then typing pre-multiply. Pre-multiply takes your RGB image, red, green, blue image, takes the alpha channel and then uses the alpha to cut it out. There we go. So now I have something that is just the glass, okay? Now, again, it looks rough because my render settings are low, so it's going to look rough. Uh, ideally, my next one will be nice and clean when I render it out at a higher resolution. So now this is just the glass. It's just all by itself, just the glass. If I decided to change the color, I can click on that pre-malt, uh, add a grade node by hitting G, and then I can make that brighter or make that darker. Or if I open up my colors, I can tint the glass to whatever color I want. Okay, that's the goal of this. That's what I want to be able to do. Okay, not necessarily make it something crazy, but just enhance it, make it better than it was out of the rendering. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And now I need to get this glass onto the other ones. So I need to replace this glass onto this one that has no glass. Well, this is already cut out, okay? So all I'm gonna do is just add a merge and I'm gonna merge the um, grade here, merge the no glass there, view that, and now you'll see that I have the glass right on top of it. This is what it looked like before, that's what it looks like now. There's the glass, there's the enhanced glass, this is it on top of there. Okay, um, much easier to do. Now, uh, let's say that I want to isolate um, the V. I want to do something with the V, I don't like the color of it, whatever it is. <clears throat> on here, there is a V, and then on here, there is also a V. So it doesn't matter which one of these I use, it's all up to me as to what I um, uh, grab with that. Uh, I'm just gonna use this one because I've already started the process with this one. So I'm gonna go um, add another crypto mat. He'll be by himself. So he'll be here. I'm going to view this, go back to object, <coughs> cough, and then I'm going to go to my picker and then I will pick the V. So control shift, click it, and now I've selected it. If I make a mistake, you hit clear and then you control shift, click it again. If you want to remove something, figure that out, it's right there. There, there. Okay. So now this, I don't want to separate it. I don't want to break it off just to drop it back onto it. What I want to do is I want to create a channel, a brand new channel that will allow me to edit just the V, okay? So I'm going to copy this information back into here. So I'm going to not make this an alpha channel. I'm going to make this a brand new channel. And I'm going to call this A, not A, 
I don't know why I named the other one A, but I did, and I just left it there. Uh, and I'm going to call this, why is my caps lock on? V. And then this will be V.mask. And that worked. Um, so now this is its own thing. So if I come up here and I go to V, there it is, isolated all by itself. Now I can go back to RGBA. And then I'm going to copy this and bring it into this merge. So I'm just going to hit K for copy, connect this in here, and I'm going to say copy the uh, V to V. Now what that's doing is it's taking this image, it's isolating just that V, and then copying that into a brand new channel that I could then use down the road whenever I'm ready for it. I'm going to keep this a little bit more organized than I currently have it. I'm going to scoot that up there. I'm going to put a dot note here. That's better. Okay, nice and neat. Okay, the hold control, add dot nodes, and then you can move stuff around. All right. So let's see this in action, and then we'll add some more. So I'm going to go to a grade node, and I'm going to go to my gain and just crank up the red. It's obviously a different color. I only want the red to affect the V, so I go down to the mask area, and I just choose V. Now that's only affecting that one letter. Okay. Again, this is all about being able to isolate individual pieces. On a card that they render out, um, it might take literally an hour, two hours, or a day, or a weekend to render out what they're doing. It might be a still image, it might be an animation, it might be part of a movie. Who knows? they don't have the colors exact as they render it out. So they need to be able to tweak it. That's what we're doing there. Uh, so we can do this, make sure it works. It works, success. Let's delete that grade. Let's add a new one that's not destroyed. And then change this to V. And then maybe we'll just give this a little bit more brightness. There we go. A little bit more brighter, a little bit more prominence. The color of this glass, maybe I want that to match so I can open up the uh, gain here and give it a little bit more green I think it's pretty good good enough at least for now all right so uh, I like to I break apart everything so I'm gonna break apart um, the inside doesn't matter too much because I can't really see it uh, but the outside sure I may want to control the coloring of that outer uh, framework so I will also make a cryptomat for that to keep myself organized I'm gonna hit the tab key and do a backdrop Okay, a backdrop basically allows us to make a little node called backdrop and then call it what it is, glass. That's the glass area. Make another backdrop, and this will be our V. <coughs> Bless you. I'll make another crypto mat. Drag it there. Now, you can see we don't want to ever do this where I like put the lines on top. We always want to drag this over and then have its own little thing right there. Okay, so this will be the um, metal work, so I'll view that. Make sure my picker's on here, make sure my object is on. I will zoom in, control shift click. I have all of that, yes, good. Um, and I also have these things, maybe I wanna do something different with that, we'll see. All right, so we'll go there, go there. I'm going to again make a new channel, and this will be building building.mask, okay? So I just put building, building.mask, that seems to work. And then I'll do a backdrop. BLD, there we go. And then I'll do just another uh, copy. Okay, keep everything in line, so you just scoot this down. Scoot this over, perfect. And then we just copy building to building. Okay, so now if I were to add a grade node here and I went to mask, I should see V mask, that's listed, and I should see building mask, that's also listed. And then again, I can control the coloring on this building just by sliding over just those and it doesn't affect anything else. Let me reset all of these. And there we go. Now let's go back to the original one with the glass and let's go to the end result here and so if I use one and two, you can already see just those couple things I've done has greatly improved my rendering. This, eh, it's kind of boring and flat, 
this, a little bit more poppy, a little bit more uh, vibrant, right? Cool. The goal of all of these is that as we start copying these um, nodes and putting them into this line, that we're creating this structure that we can use anywhere in that chain, okay? So even though this is right after that, we don't have to have it there. Um, if I disconnect this, and I bring this down right here, this works the same exact way. That mask is still there. It's still affecting this stuff the same way. Typically, I like to keep everything kind of like this is where I'm copying stuff in, and then this is where I'm editing my grades and all that other stuff. Okay. Um, I also like to keep this a bit more organized. This is a bit kind of chaotic, so let's just straighten this up a little bit more. So, oops, get back there. So if I have these in line here, and then I just drag this down to like this, drag this down like that, control drag this here. See how much nicer that looks? Better, cool. Um, this dot, goes from here to this dot, to this dot, to that dot, to that dot. So these dots are essentially the same thing as me connecting it right to that, but we're not making a mess. It keeps it nice and organized. All right, so now I'm going to need um, an ambient occlusion. So I'm going to shuffle. Keep everything nice, organized. There you go. And this is my AO shuffle. Normally, I, I already have one that's called that. Uh, normally, I keep everything um, named as I'm going, but because I'm lecturing, you get the idea that I'm naming stuff already. There we go. All right. So this extracts the ambient occlusion out of here. There it is. And then I'm going to go to Merge, drop it into this list. And then I'm going to hit the right buttons. There we go. And then make sure this is set to Multiply. There we go. So if I hit D, I can see it before and after. And again, I'm getting the, the contrast of that ambient inclusion. That's the whole point of that. So it gives it just a little bit more depth. Let's pull out. That's good there. Okay, I'm going to pull these down further. And let's see, what else should we add in here? Oh, we got to fix this, right? Okay, so um, let's look at this real quick. Um, depth is right there. There we go. Oops, wrong button. Wrong button. Depth is right there. Okay. So as I move my mouse around here, I just want to verify that all of my stuff is still reading. We can't see the depth, but if we look down here at the red channel, we can see how it's adjusting those numbers. Okay, so that means that it definitely is reading my depth. Um, so I can eventually apply my depth to this. So I'm going to do that too. Um, Z to focus. Change that back to RGBA. Drag this into the mix. Oops. Uh, this has to be after all of our other adjustments. So let me just scoop that back up. There we go. And then I'm going to use my depth. I'm going to set this to direct. And move my little dot around. Where'd you go? Right there. Okay, now this dot should be updating as I move this around. Okay, so if I move it to like right here, that seems like a good spot there. Uh, and then I'm going to go and preview this. So I'm going to go to my focal plane setup. Make sure I'm viewing this. There we go. Um, this is showing me what's in focus, just that red dot. Okay, so I'm going to take my depth of field up. Because of the size of this, I may have to go to like 100 to get like a good amount that's in focus, okay? Your scene is going to be different. You might have it at 20 or 50 or whatever. Uh, let's turn focal plane setup back to result, okay? Definitely a lot of depth of field on this. Our building is basically super blurry. So let's take these sizes down, so two and four. Let's take this depth of field up some more, like 250. 200. All right, that seems pretty good. Uh, I'm going to hit D to disable it. Yeah, look at that. So the building here is nice and crisp, and then we're getting those softer spots. Now I do want to check this out real quick. Let me check my depth here. 
I'm pulling these numbers down really, really far. Whoops, that's too far. All right, I'm not going to pull those numbers down because it's not showing me anything. Uh, I'm going to disable this and then see if I get different results. Nope, it's the same thing. So I have a low resolution rendering, so I'm getting these like weird little areas where it's like blurry right in the middle. So that should fix itself when I uh, do my big rendering. All right, uh, it needs to go onto a background, so I'll make a background. Constant. Uh, spelling words right helps. Constant. There we go. Giving this a color. So whatever color I pick here, I'll go yellow for now. Um, I'm going to add a ramp to it. Okay, and the way that the ramp works is it uses that base color yellow as the starting point, and then whatever color I pick here is the ending point. Okay, so I'm going to go to like a um, dark color like that for now. It's ugly, I know. I will fix everything after. Um, I go back to my ramp. Here's the line, so I can move this, and that will control the grad gradient. I want this typically to extend. I don't want to have any harsh lines anywhere at the top. The bottom is a little bit different. The bottom, you really don't see that harsh line. The top, you definitely do. So that seems pretty good for now. Uh, then I'm going to take this down here, and I'm just going to merge it. So A will be the top. This is that. B will be the bottom. That's that. And there's my building. Now, it's definitely not in the right spot. Um, the size here, 1400 by 1750, is not the size I rendered this out at. So I'm going to come over here and hit S, change this to the size I rendered, and now it fits. When I go back and I re-render this out, um, I have to just make sure I change this number to whatever it is that I've rendered it out, whatever resolution, and it'll automatically fit that to the right size. Uh, my shadows are grainy, not a big deal, I can adjust those after, okay? Um, I do want to add a glow to this as well, like that V, I want to add a glow. So I'm going to go um, after my defocus, and I'm going to add a glow. Okay, I don't want everything to glow, so I'm going to change my width channel to just the V. You'll see just the V glows. And then I can adjust the brightness, I can adjust the size, and there we go. Okay, so now that's a very nuts and bolts how, I can, how you can separate all your stuff. All of these work the exact same way. Regardless of if you're separating diffuse, specular, shadow, anything out, it's the same exact thing. When I come over here to this one, this definitely looks a lot more complex, but it's not. All I've done differently is I've separated the shadow out. That's something different. And I've also adjusted some of my things. Like here's my glass. Here's some adjustments I did on the glass. Here is my um, V, just copy that in. Here's the frame, copy that in. Here's my ambient occlusion, merge that in, and then here's the shadow stuff, okay? So I've just basically <coughs> shuffled out the shadow, so there it is, because the shadow is an actual pass. Whenever I'm extracting something out of it, okay, I have a, an object I want to select and make a channel, I have to use CryptoMat. Whenever I have a channel right here, I'll use a shuffle, okay? And remember what we talked about last time um, for the past assignment, using that contact sheet. That's where you can look at all the passes and see if anything, any one of these would already give me that information. If one of these passes was already the frame of my building, I could just use that pass. It's not, so I have to use a crypto map. <clears throat> um, shadow is right down here. If I hit A, I lied. Where's my shadow? Oh, there it is. Uh, here's my shadow mask right there. Um, so that's the one I'm pulling out, okay? So as I get down to this and I've extracted the shadow, I have to invert it, so I invert. There it is. And then I multiply it, and then I'm going to go back to my settings and then just reset this back to the 1400 because that's this size. And then I have, again, control over how dark that shadow is. And then I can also go in here and, let's say, add a grade, and I could go into the gain of this and just tint it if I wanted to. Let me look at it and see. Sometimes that helps because I'm losing that and it's tinting. 
Uh, so this is one of the weird things that you have to pay attention to the numbers. As I move my mouse over this, it looks like it's still white, but if you look at the blue, it's hard to see on the projector, um, it's reading at 2.46. What that means is it's actually pushing the blue's value in the white to brighter than that. So that's why it's tinting the whole thing blue. So if I do a white clamp, now this white will stay one. It won't get any brighter than that. So then when I jump back to this, I shouldn't get any blue in anything but the shadow is what we're seeing, okay? Now you'll notice that I'm using gain for a lot of these. That's just the one that I'm picking. Um, you could also try doing it in lift. And you'll see I'm getting more of the black values being raised up, where if I use the gain, I'm getting more of the white values that I'm controlling, okay? So you may want to adjust either one of these. It just depends on what your specific scene is. Uh, I may also want to go to my merge and just pull this down some so it's not as bright. There we go. Okay, so, so far that's the only difference. Um, and then that's that. That's me copying the um, depth channel back in. There's the Z to focus. There's my glow. And then all of this is just me putting this together for you to see before and after. You wouldn't have to do something like that. Okay. So. That's everything that I did here is the same thing I did here. The only difference is the shadow one. That's the only difference I have there. And then I also have this mess on this side. Okay. When I went and I rendered this out inside of After Effects, I wanted to have all of these different assets. Even if I didn't use them, I wanted to still show off that I could use them. Okay. So I went and I crypto matted every asset. So here is crypto matting just the frame. Here's me crypto matting. Oops. Look at the bottom one, there you go. Sorry, crypto matting the windows, crypto matting the floors, crypto matting the frame, crypto matting that part of the floor, crypto matting, what is this one? The concrete. Did I do this one twice? No, I think I just clicked it twice. There we go. Uh, this one should be the shadow. Nope, that's the V. There it is. <laughs> Didn't go far enough. And then this one should be the windows, okay? So I just crypto matted each one of these out, isolated each piece, and then I just wrote each piece out, okay? So I went to this one, double clicked, and then rendered these out into a folder called passes, and I labeled it cubicles.tiff. So just so you can see that, I went to write. All right, scoochie that over there. Um, go to the folder, give this a name. I made a separate folder so that all my stuff would go into that folder, and it is there. There we go. Hello. Uh, Windows. Tiff. Now, another thing that I did on each one of these is I did crypto mat them so that they're separated, and then I uh, pre multiplied them so that they would be separated from the rest of it, and then I wrote it out. Okay, so that's what this one is. It's crypto matted and then uh, for whatever reason the windows were actually giving me like a little bit of like a border around it let me disable this <coughs> so there's my windows you can see how there's like this little edge that goes around it um, so I added what's called an erode node and what that does it just pushes it in a little bit so I didn't have that line I could have done an after effects too but just easier here okay so uh, there it is I hit render and it goes out and then I would render that out so I went through, after everything was done and it looked cool at the end, I went through and I wrote out anywhere that I thought might be a cool area to show off. Uh, one of them is obviously all these different elements. So I wrote out each element. Uh, another area was, here's my shadow. So I wrote that out too. Here is my background, so I wrote that out. Uh, and then here are, oops, sorry. Uh, this is my ground with shadows. I didn't know which one I'd want to use. <coughs> Uh, and then here's all my different adjustments. So as I adjusted the glow, as I adjusted the coloring, as I adjusted the Z to focus, I wrote out each one of those things. Then I went into After Effects. Let me make a new project here. Yes, saved. And I'm going to import this. Has anyone here never used After Effects before? A couple? Okay. Um, it's not terribly difficult what I'm going to do. Um, it's just a matter of making sure that the buttons are clicked in the right order. Um, so I'm going to go, and I've double clicked in this area. I'm going to go find my stuff. Uh, what class is this? 2520, building, images. 
This is why I put it in a different folder, so they're all right there. Adjustments to here. Um, I'm gonna make sure that this is not checked, and I'm gonna hit import. Any of these pop up, I'm just gonna say pre-malt. There we go. Um, some of these I'll have to go back and unpre-malt because it won't be right, but that's fine. Um, here's all my images. I need to get these together so I can stack them one after the other. So I'm gonna go and grab all of these, uh, drop them into a new composition. So I just drag it here. And I'm gonna say single composition, um, use dimensions from whichever one this is. Um, I'm not gonna sequence the layers in this case. And then I'm just gonna hit, um, okay. There we go. Actually, sorry, one more step, one more step, sorry. I forgot one more thing. Uh, the still duration, that's what I wanna set. I'm gonna set this to 10 seconds. This is overkill, we don't want this to be 10 seconds, but that's how long it's gonna be. Um, cool. So now, down here, these are all my different layers. So now I wanna put them in the order that I want them to show up in, okay? So if I just turn all of these off, and I start with my background, that should be the first one. So I'm just gonna put this one at the bottom. Uh, then I'm gonna go with my um, building shadow. Where's my shadow? Okay, I'm gonna look and see which one I want. That one, that one. I think I like this one better, so I'm gonna set that one there. Uh, then what else? I have my frame. I don't want this other shadow, so I'll just delete that. I want my floor. I want my cubicles. I want the um, sorry inner floor down there, glass. There you go. Then the letter. And then adjustment one, two, three, and four. Okay. So this is the order I want them to show up in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the worst thing is that we're working in Maya, then we worked in Nuke, now we're working in After Effects, and all my hotkeys and my fingers are just getting confused. There we go. Um, so this is adjustment number four here. And you'll see there's not a huge difference. Okay, it's slight difference, but not huge. So I'm gonna go and figure out how I want these to be on here. If you've never used After Effects before, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do this. Um, there are other ways that are a bit more fancy. Um, I can show those two if you want. Um, but I just want to show the easy one first. So I'm going to go to this top layer. I'm going to go to Effects under Transition, and I'm going to pick one of these. The easiest one to do, the most sorry, the most professional-looking one of these to do is probably a linear wipe. Okay. Um, basically, it's just going to wipe the image on or off. Okay. This brings up the effects, transition complete, and the direction and feather. Three options. That's all we really need. So I'm going to drag the transition complete, and you can see how this line is going to go across it. Okay, I'm going to turn the effect off just for a second and just verify. Okay, nothing. Go back here. Okay. So zero percent is no effect. So like this is this is currently on. I want to start each one of these being off. So I'm going to start it at 100 percent. I'm going to make sure this ticker is right here at the beginning. I'm going to click the transition stopwatch. I'm going to scooch up to eight frames. So I just drag this ticker to about eight frames and then set that to zero. So now if I drag this back and forth, you'll see a transition between one image and the other. It's ugly to see the line. Sometimes it does help the viewer see there's an actual transition. Something is changing. If you don't like the line, you can change it by feathering it and then you won't see the line. Sometimes, again, it's difficult to see the actual uh, item. Um, you can change the direction by making this, let's say, negative 90. And so now it'll wipe from the other direction. Okay. So again, your personal preference, how you want it, that to be set up. You could go on some crazy angle. Fancy. Good. Once I have this set up, I'm going to rewind it to the beginning. I'm going to take this linear wipe and copy it. I'm going to grab all my other layers and paste it, and that will automatically copy and paste that entire thing. Okay. Um, if I uh, look at it now, you can see how everything's like wiping on all at the same time. Obviously, not what we want. So I'm going to grab all of these, and I'm just going to start nudging things down. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see this better, and just drag these layers down. 
Now it's going to be eight frames from one transition to the next. So what I don't want to do is start to overlap them. I need someone to be able to process what they're actually seeing. So eight frames is like one of these things coming on. I'll give it, um, I, don't know, I think two frames is probably good. Then I'm going to control click and then I'm going to do the same thing here. If you forget like where's the next one going to be, you can hit U. That will open up all the keyframes. That's what those little diamonds are. And then I can see this is where it ended. So then I just need to go, let me grab all of them. Uh, two little clickies past it. Control click that, drag this two clicks past. Drag this two clicks past. Oops. Drag this one two clicks past. Let me zoom out a little bit because now I'm running out of space. Now the way I did mine is, uh, make sure I click around one, um, is I animated the position of each one of the bottom ones and then I did this transition thing for the top ones, which I will show once it's all done. And then this one's going to go there. Okay, good enough. So now if I hit play, there's the background, there's the shadow, there's that. Okay, so I got to fix that first. Uh, I'm going to go to the shadow, click on the switches and modes, and then I'm going to switch this to a multiply. So in After Effects, that's how we would set up the multiply there. Um, I also need to change my background color. I'm getting like a lot of white. Um, this is where I'm going to go into my background here, interpret the footage main, and say ignore the alpha channel. There we go. So now it's using the actual full color. All right, so now watch it again. There, there's the shadow, there's that, there's that, there's that. And then here's all the other transitions going into what that end result would look like. And then once it's done, it'll play back in real time. Okay, now you could do other stuff too. Instead of that background, I could have put a cityscape, right? Because there's nothing saying that, you know, just because I have this laid out here that I couldn't have thrown like a city as my background instead of, you know, that. All right, now we're going to pretend that we're done. So I'm going to go to uh, zoom out. I'm going to find where this thing ends, right about here. Nope, right about here. Uh, I'll go up another second or so, two seconds, and then I'm going to hit N. That's going to set the end of my work area. And then I'm just going to uh, export, add this to the render queue. Lossless, set this to QuickTime, go to Format Options, set this to Apple ProRes 422HQ. Hit OK, hit OK. Go to the movie name here, find my folder. Movies, Arcana, uh, <coughs> building passes, and then you hit render. And this will be the quickest render you've ever seen in the world. Uh, because we're simply just dragging stuff in here, it is a lot easier. There we go. Okay, now that's how you can do it really quick and easy if you want to. This part is not required for the assignment. But I want to show you these things because it's an important part of our industry being able to tell these kinds of stories. Now, this is, um, I didn't save all that hard work. Look at that. Oh, there we go. One of the gripes about After Effects, it doesn't just jump to the folder I want it to. It doesn't automatically know. I don't know, I put out three. What's that? Two. Building images. All right, so now in this one, this is the one, if you're a little bit more comfortable with After Effects and want to do a little bit more fancier stuff. Uh, each one of these I animated um, just using position. So if you watch this thing up here, you'll see the position of that background just drops in. And then the position of that drops in, the position of that drops in, the position of all these just drop in. And at the very end, I'm using these wipes. Just because the wipes aren't really effective unless you can kind of see them transition in. Okay. Now, if, again, if you're comfortable with After Effects, I also use the speed graph so that it looks fancy, so it looks like it's coming in. I also threw motion blur on these so that we get this nice, like, dropping in motion versus just everything being, you know, perfectly crisp and cut out. That's kind of boring. You throw motion blur on it. Okay, much better. Okay, so that should take you through getting your building done, rendering it out, and then submitting it. You're only submitting a high-res image. So once you have your 
stuff in, nu in Maya done, you've done your samples or your setup inside of Nuke, you know that's good. You render out the high quality one, you come in here, you replace these, you write out the high quality one right there. Now what's cool about this whole setup is from Maya to Nuke to After Effects, everything is already set up. So at any point, if I come in with any assignment and, I, and I, I've labeled things at least consistently, I should be able to render it in Maya, go into Nuke, change some names on some items, and then everything else should just populate. That's the great thing about having this kind of pipeline that would go from one program to the next to the next. It is a lot. It is confusing. This is the industry we're in. This is an education area, so you guys just have to suck it up and figure it out. <laughs> um, 